PET scanning before, during and after therapy has become standard of care in, in many of the aggressive lymphomas, including Hodgkin lymphoma, and particularly the PET, which is performed uh, during therapy, often quite early in the course of chemotherapy, is highly predictive of a long-term outcome. And that has been used in the recent five, 10 years to construct studies, many of which have been performed quite successfully, where the treatment is being guided by the use of the results of early PET. So in studies where the initial chemotherapy is relatively mild and untoxic, like ABVD, an early PET can guide subsequent therapy. So in PET negative patients, which are the good ones, the responding patients, um, PET is being used to uh, identify patients who might go on with treatment, with less toxic treatment. And uh, I think the best example is the omission of bleomycin from ABVD after a negative PET. That was done in the UK-led RATHL study, and it's led to uh, um, change of guidelines in many countries, so the majority of patients can be treated with only two cycles of ABVD with uh, bleomycin. That's a big step forward. Also, the same uh, concept has been used to accelerate or intensify treatment in patients who, despite responding to two cycles of ABVD, do not have a perfect response, so still PET positive after two cycles. They can go on in certain guidelines with intensified treatment, such as Cobb escalated, and it seems to improve survival. That has never been shown in a randomized setting, though. So PET has a role to play. It's very prognostic, but there are many things that are prognostic. Studies have shown that it can also be used to tailor treatment to the individual, which is a good thing in Hodgkin lymphoma. The majority of patients survive. That means the majority of patients survive to live with the long-term side effects that we give. So individualized treatment is the way forward.